Okay, we'll try to record our lecture for the topic trespass to land. So this is the second type of trespass. Okay, we usually we name it or we label it as a trilogy okay, of trespass. So the first part of trespass um is already completed. Okay, trespass to person, which covers assault, battery, and um false imprisonment. And I hope and I believe okay, uh, you you have or you will be watching the recorded video soon lah hopefully okay, for trust I mean for false imprisonment okay, the part that we didn't cover uh, using uh, face to face okay for today we are going to focus on trespass to land so actually uh, when usually especially for landmen okay whenever they see the word trespass the first thing which come across to their mind is about trespass to land lah, okay, rather than trespass to uh, person or trespass to good so trespass to land is something that we usually associate with the word trespass itself here so from the word trespass and land here, we have to really understand or we have to define, okay, or we have to interpret what's the meaning of the word land here. Okay, land, um, is it literal meaning or is it uh now we want to well, we want to know statutory meaning of the word land here? Literal, we know lah, the land, okay, uh, the land as it is, but um statutorily it is uh, defined under national land code. Okay, you are going to do your land law later. It's a bulky uh Okay, bulky statute law for national land code here. So basically, it is um, contained in section 5 of NLC, national land code. So land is defined to cover five things here. Okay, surface, as we usually understand it, but it covers as well earth below, okay, below the surface. And uh, for the purpose of trespass to land, okay, it covers as well all vegetation. Okay, doesn't matter whether it grows naturally or whether it is grown okay, or in its labor. And um, what I mean, what if the land contains some buildings or whatever, um, whatever attachment or fix, fixture? Okay, here. Yeah. So yes, that one also is is considered as part of land. Okay, all things attached to the earth, and as well, it covers land that is covered by water. For example, river or stream or whatsoever. Okay, so so this is a very broad meaning of the word land. Okay, for the purpose of trespass to land. And then this is the meaning uh, or definition of the word trespass to land. Okay, have have I mean, bearing in mind, okay, we are we are dealing with intentional thoughts. Okay, so mean that here it starts with intentional. I mean, definition will cover the word intention here. So intentionally, let me. Right. Uh, intentionally entering. I mean, that's the way how it is being committed. Intentionally entering or intentionally remaining on, or intentionally causing any physical matter to come into contact with, okay, with what? With land and uh, in, in the possession of another. So from this particular definition, I mean, uh, there are lots of definitions, but this is one of the definitions here. So you can, we can actually extract certain elements here. Uh, I mean, there must be intention and the act of uh, trespass here, it might cover uh, enter or remain okay, or even cause physical matter to come into contact, in physical contact with the land. And the land is in the possession of uh, plaintiff okay, most of the time. Or another way of defining the word here is... Okay, uh, Iman said, please fill um, attendance form. Okay, uh, I mean, later when you come back to your uh, face -to -face, our face-to-face -face class, you will need to sign lah. Okay, but then I will double check uh, against uh, the record by Iman here. Okay, all right. So, and then another way of defining the word here, it is unjustifiable, unjusti okay? Not justified, unjustifiable interference. So that's the word, okay? interference with the possession of, of land. So whatever interference, which is not justified, okay? which is not permitted, which is not allowed lah, basically by the one who has possession of the land. So again, uh, the, the highlight or the emphasis on the element here is on the possession. Because we also have the word possession. We also have the word ownership. We even have another um, connecting words or related word, which is occupation. Okay? And you must be able to uh, differentiate. Uh, this is an example. Okay? These are all the common examples of trespass to land. I mean, uh, the modes of commission here. Okay. The first one is the most common one. Okay, walking onto land without permission. I mean, the word, the, uh, the moment a defendant step onto um onto plaintiff's land or walking onto it, then it amounts to trespass to land. Or another way of committing uh, trespass to land here is refusing to leave. 
he went permission has been withdrawn. So initially, there was permission. I mean, initially, defendant was allowed to be on the land. But after one hour, for example, or please leave. But the moment the defendant said, oh, I don't want to leave. He, he refused to leave. Then it amounts to trespass to land. Okay, another indirect way, okay. Right. Uh, of committing trespass to land is by throwing objects. I mean, um, defendant remains on his own land, okay, but then he throws something and then um, uh, it hits or, uh, I mean, it comes into contact with uh, plaintiff land here. So throwing objects or so dumping anything okay, onto, so, so, uh, onto plaintiff land here. So still, it, 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 it is considered as trespass to land. Is everyone okay? Uh, has it you... Yes, all good. Has it? Can you mute your your mic? Okay, all right, thanks. Okay, let's go to principle. Okay, just now we were talking about uh, the modes of committing uh, the act of trespass to land, and then we we were discussing about definition. Okay, just a simple definition. Now we are dealing with we are looking at basic principles. So at least there are two okay, principles uh, which is associated with trespass to land. Okay, the first one that you have to know. Okay, trespass to land is something which is actionable. Per se. I mean, the moment it is being committed, then plaintiff has the right to file an action asking for compensation. Okay, meaning again, having said so, there's no need to prove damage. But for example, the act of stepping onto a plaintiff land, does it actually damage or, or cause something or cause damage to uh, cause loss to the plaintiff here? Uh, uh, to the plaintiff? No, okay, but then it is actionable per se. So there's no need to prove damage here. But if there is damage, then of course, damages, okay, compensation will be higher, obviously. Okay, that one, uh, we extract the rule from the case of Sega Restu. Okay, Sega and then Restu lah. Sega Restu and Wong uh, Kai Chuan. Okay, um, reported in 1994. And in this case, this is the quotation which is relevant for our discussion uh, today. Okay, especially the one that I have uh, made in bold font here. Okay, in law, okay, we are talking about law. A trespasser is one who wrongfully enters on land okay, in the possession of another. And the trespasser here okay, has neither right nor permission. I mean, no right, no permission to be on the land. And the second uh, photograph there, okay, the, the, the one in red, uh, red color, okay, the was in red color. Uh, plaintiff is entitled to recover the major okay, compensation in trespass, even though okay, he has sustained no losses. Okay? I mean, no loss, but then the right, okay, um, the, his right is being infringed, then he can actually file a legal suit okay, in the courts of law. Okay? But what more if he has uh, sustained certain losses here? So the amount of compensation will be higher. It will reflect the, uh, the, the, the actual losses that he has suffered here. Okay, another principle which is associated with trespass to land here, okay, uh, it might involve continuing trespass. I mean, it, uh, in, uh, trespass to land here, TTL, okay, it might be committed continuously. And how to calculate? Is it calculated um, hourly basis or weekly basis or yearly basis? Okay, it is calculated day to day. I mean, after 24 hours, new course of action. After 24 hours, the new course of action. I mean, if it is committed for a long time, then amount of compensation will be higher. All right, especially here, for example, failure to remove an object, okay, um, which is um, uh, I mean, which is not allowed by uh, by the plaintiff here. So this um, this amounts to trespass to land, okay, unlawfully placed on land. So how do we calculate? So uh, here, the action here, okay, it leads to a new course of action uh, every day, okay, each day. So this is taken from this case, uh, very, uh, I mean, this is a common law case. We are dealing with many common law cases, but in your textbook, you have uh, lots of local cases to show application of the rule here. Okay, in the case of Holmes and Wilson and others, um, defendant, okay, he built certain uh, supports, okay, certain wall, okay, support built against wall here, uh, for a road on plaintiff land. Okay, uh, the act of construction of building here, no problem. But then he did it on somebody's land, okay, plaintiff land, and then a plaintiff uh, sued her or uh, sued him, okay, and then um, I mean it has been settled. Okay, defendant paid damages for the trespass. It's done. But then actually. Um, the, the, the thing, okay, the support here still, it is still on plaintiff land. I mean, it's not being removed here. So again, um, uh, I mean, they can, uh, the, the case can be brought to the court again and again here. All right. So he, uh, defendant will have liable again in further action, in another action here for failing to remove the buttresses, okay, the support here. Okay, buttress, buttress here means support against all certain 
certain uh, certain things that you you put on plaintiff letter which amounts to trespass to land. Okay, this is an um, example of local case. We have the case of Chia Kim Tong and Taro Kaur, okay, 1989. So what happened here, um, defendant um, built, uh, built his house, okay, and then actually the house encroached on two plaintiff's land. A little part, lah. I mean, just a small part of it, but still, okay, still, actually, it infringed plaintiff's right here. And defendant said, no, actually, uh, previous owner said, it's okay for me to, to build here. And it encroached plaintiff land. Okay, plaintiff is the new owner. Lah, basically, yeah. All right. So now, in this case, the defense is that okay, defendant relied on estoppel and consent and said that the previous owner before plaintiff had never complained. Actually, did, uh, this might be true under uh, law of contract. Okay, but then again, whether... Uh, it falls under exception or not here. But for tax law, I mean, especially for trespass to land, the defense is not acceptable actually here. Yeah, and the court said, well, this was a case of continuing trespass. As long as your, I mean, part of your house is there, so it amounts to trespass day to day until you remove um, uh, the, that part of the house lah, what, by whatever mean here. So the court said that, therefore, a fresh cause of action arises from day to day. The Latin term is the die in the okay, day to day lah. All right, so long as the trespass exists, unless you do something about the encroach, encroach part of your house here. Okay, otherwise, you have to pay compensation. But again, um, damages is not always the, the only remedy that the plaintiff is asking from the court. Okay, so they want compensation, they also want injunction. I mean, court's order to stop okay, the encroachment here, for example. Okay, all right, we go to the elements now. Uh, so, if we compare with uh, trespass to person, can usually they have lucky number three. But for trespass to land, it's, uh, I mean, it's just a simple one. Because why? We only have two elements to be proved here. So, it's quite simple to be proved or to be fulfilled here. All right. So, again, uh, the element is taken or extracted from the, from the definition itself. First, we have to prove possession of land. I mean, because if there's no possession, then there's no issue of trespass to land. And then another one, we just need to prove, I mean, plaintiff needs to prove unjustifiable interference of land. Because if the interference is justified, then there's no issue of trespass to land. Okay, but we, uh, uh, this is uh, for the explanation. All right, so here, basically, when we talk about possession here, um, I mean, this is further explanation actually. Okay? Uh, we, we, it can be further divided into two subcategories or two subtypes here. The first one, we have de facto possession. Okay, and we also have de jure possession. That's the Latin, the Latin uh, word here. What's the meaning of de facto? In fact, okay, the word facts here. So basically, de facto, it means having a thing under the physical control or it refers to actual Possession, that's the word de facto, as a matter of fact here. But if de jure possession, it is something which is indirect. It is possession which is recognized in the eyes of law. So usually the, the law just presume that you possess this thing. I mean, you, uh, maybe plaintiff doesn't really show actual possession or physical control. But in the eyes of law, he's the one who has um, a possession, okay, who is being recognized as having possession of that particular Piece of land, for example, or even particular um, building or premise here, for example. Okay, and a related word, okay, we have the word uh, possession, we have the word ownership, okay, but for trespass to land, no need to prove ownership, okay. We also have the word occupation, okay, remember when we discussed about occupier's liability, the one who occupy the building or occupy the premise, but for trespass to land, there must be um, evidence of possession here. Uh, and then for the purpose of trespass to land, occupation is not equivalent to Possession. Okay, I mean, yeah. Possession uh, usually includes occupation together. But if you occupy the thing, doesn't mean that you possess the thing. Uh, that's the simple, the simpler explanation. Okay. Because why occupation is a much lesser status. Okay, occupation here is not related to job okay, or career, but occupation is the fact of occupying uh, the land. Okay, here. So example of occupation, the one who has occupation is licensee. Okay, the one who has permission, the one who has license to be there. But uh, well, I mean, are they having possession as well? Not necessarily so, okay? Or even trespasser, but trespasser is unlawful occupier. They occupy the premise or they, they occupy the land, but then um, it was done unlawfully. Okay, for, um, for uh, I mean, uh, you can see the, uh, the, the word in quotation here, okay? Mere, this is the explanation, okay? Mere occupation does not amount to possession. 
but usually possession comes together with occupation. But in terms of ranking, occupation will be um, lower, lah, lower degree or lesser status as compared to possession. We don't discuss ownership because we don't, I mean, trespass to land doesn't need to, do, to, to prove elements of ownership. Doesn't matter who owns the land. So long you have the right to, to, I mean, so long you have the possession, either de jure or de facto. Okay, and this is the famous case, but the famous case for trespass to land. It involves squatters. Okay, Sidik. Okay, Sidik bin Haji. Cepat nak nak remove ni, tak nampak. Sidik bin Haji, what? Can you see that Sidik bin Haji? Can you see the first? Sidik bin Haji, what the case? Sidik, uh, the government of state of Perak. Baiklah, Sidik bin Haji. And for four hundred sixty two others. Uh, because this is the full screen, can then I can see all the toolbar here. The, so the toolbar is blocking my view of the screen actually. The, the slide. That's why I cannot see. I can see Sidik bin Haji. Bin Haji cannot remember. Sidik bin Haji apa nama case tu? Haji Muhammad. Dia tulis. Yeah. All right. Okay. Sidik bin Haji Muhammad. All right. So this is the case which involves squatters. So in Malaysia, squatters are quite common lah. Whether you want to enforce it or not, can all right. So for this case, 1982, this is landmark case lah. Okay. Uh, he's uh, seated here, Encik Sidik, oh, Mr. Sidik here, he's one of the representative lah, uh, representing all other squatters here. What happened was that actually in 1970s or even early 1980s here, Sidik uh, and um, a group of people here, they opened a large part of jungle area in North Perak, the northern part of Perak here. And they actually occupy the land, lah. okay, they clear, they, they do the clearing, okay, they they uh, they build a house okay, basically but later okay, state government didn't approve lah for for them to to do whatever activities here so plenty were given notice by state government okay government said okay stop work and then please vacate the area we are going to repossess the area okay remember for um Land matters, okay, it belongs to state. Okay, it is state state affairs lah, basically here. Okay. So now a plaintiff, okay, CD, he brought an action for a declaration okay, from the court that they were entitled in law and in equity to be in the possession of the land because they have uh, put in lots of efforts, okay, and they do the clearing or whatever, okay, and they occupy the land, actual occupation here. But the court held that no, no, okay, we cannot allow you to be there. You cannot succeed because why you are Squatter. So in the eyes of law, in Malaysia especially, squatters have no right. Okay, uh, I no right in law, no right in equity. But um, on the other hand, okay, actually you are uh, occupying the land illegally. Okay, you are you have committed certain um offense here. Okay, so illegal occupation of state land actually it is an offense under national land code under section four to five of NLC. Okay, rather than asking for for your right, actually you are you have actually committed. An offense under NLC under national code. And remember, okay, um, ignorance of law is not excuse. You cannot say, oh, we don't know. We thought we can uh, claim our rights over the land can by uh, clearing the land whatsoever. All right. So again, uh, we are we are talking about possession here. So in the eyes of law, uh, in the eyes of law, okay, um, I mean, a state a government, a state government of Perak here, they are the one who own who who possess the land. Okay, even though physical possession is. Uh, with CD lah, the squatters can they occupy, okay, not really possession, they occupy, occupation, okay, they occupy the land, but it doesn't give the right to them lah, basically here. Okay, so again, um, to emphasize, okay, again, so uh, trespass to land is essentially a violation of right of possession. So we are not concerned with the right of ownership. So when we talk about possession, ownership, so usually the issue uh, or the, the, um, the, the, the relevant, okay, the relevant uh, scenario will be between landlord and tenant who has better rights okay, between landlord and tenant the moment landlord receive um, rent okay, for example rental can landlord just go inside uh, the house uh, that he has rented out cannot can he actually landlord can be liable for trespass because who has possession of the um, land or the house now okay the the tenant rather than the landlord uh, that's that's how it works lah. so in terms of ownership ownership remains with the landlord but that landlord doesn't have the the, uh, the possession Okay, the landlord um, has given away okay, uh, temporarily the possession to the tenant. Okay, so we have the, I mean, even we also have the term subtenant or we also have the term lodger or licensee. But usually in Malaysia, we use the word tenant. Lah. But um, if abroad, usually they have the word lodger or even licensee. I mean, right to occupy, but not it doesn't amount to tenant or it, it's not named as tenant. But we, we have tenant or subtenant. For example, 
a person um rent an apartment and then he further sub rent to uh, the, the uh, certain room within the apartment to some other person kan uh. so we have the term tenant and sub tenant okay we have the case of street and uh, Christina. Oh, sorry. Uh, so for what you just explained just now, so if there's a tenant and then he further leaves it to another person, the subtenant, then mm. at this moment, if uh say that the subtenant uh committed trespass, the owner, the real owner, cannot sue for trespass, right? He doesn't have the law. Why, why subtenant? In what way subtenant committed trespass? Because subtenant has permission of tenant, can? Tenant has immediate uh, possession. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, say that the the real owner, uh, before he leaves the house to the tenant, he said, no, uh, you cannot, you cannot, uh, ah, that one breach, breach of contract, contractual rather than uh, rather than um thoughts rather than tortious. Uh, usually oh. in order uh, you you must have tenancy agreement kan uh, either oral or even uh, in written. Okay, in Malaysia usually it, it should be in writing kan, black and white. But let's say there's nothing in black and white. It's just uh, tenancy agree. I mean, it's just oral agreement between the two. So, I mean, we have to look what other terms, whether you allow subtenance or not. Subtenancy is allowed or not here. Okay, thank you. Uh, after all, the right to sue is given to the tenant rather than to the landlord. Okay, the right to sue for trespass, can like I said just now. Okay, I mean, the moment landlord allows the tenant to take over the premise, for example, I mean, to, to be the tenant by way of tenancy, then no more right to sue for trespass on, on the part of landlord. Generally, but sometimes landlord retain certain part of the land, for example, it's possible lah, that way, but that one much more complicated. But generally, the moment landlord allows tenancy okay, um, to be applicable or to be uh, uh, in running, okay? so I mean, no more right for him to sue for trespass. He can be liable for trespass, he could be a trespasser. Okay? Uh, I mean, here, if he were to compare, so tenant has better right compared to landlord as far as um, trespass to land is concerned. Don't be confused, eh? um, girls and boys. Okay, uh, usually uh, that's why landlord cannot simply go and enter uh, the rented house. Can I mean tenant has more right actually. But then again, uh, there's there are certain limitations. Can I mean tenants has certain limitation uh, how to deal dealing with um the 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 rent the rented uh, land or rented property here. That one that's why we we read together uh, contract as well as. Thoughts. But now we are talking about tortious action, okay? uh, action under thoughts law rather than contract law, rather than contractual. But sometimes, um, okay, our meeting will end in 10 minutes. Uh, so once it ends, then uh, please come back again. Lah, okay? So that, I mean, we cannot finish, but we still have time. Okay? It asked me to upgrade. You have to pay to upgrade. But if we were to use, uh, I mean, uh, regularly, then of course I will pay. Lah. But now because we only have one scan. Okay, we have another case, Street and Montfort here. Uh, this is common law case. You have more, more local cases in your textbook okay, for your reading purpose. Lah. Okay. All right, so here, this is a pill case. Respondent, the name is Mr. Street. Okay, what the name? Okay, Mr. Street. So he granted a license, permission lah, to the appellant, uh, Montfort, to occupy two, two rooms at a weekly rent. This is actually uh, the practice uh, abroad, lah, basically. I mean, you can, um, you can rent out the room weekly or even monthly. Story. I remember when I was uh, in Nottingham, kan? I was there almost two years. So the, the rental is paid every four weeks, irrespective of the month, actually. Because some, I mean, uh, um, week, weekly basis, it will be shorter kan, compared to months because weekly 28 um, days kan, a week. But for month, you can have 30 or 31 days. So uh, I paid rent every four weeks. The, uh, the, the landlord will come to collect the rent physically because uh, it was an old man but very rich okay? he owned all the buildings near my area so he will come and knock on the door and then he will ask for the rent lah. so we paid um, physical money not the transfer whatsoever kan? Uh, I mean those days lah, in, way back in year uh, in year macam lama 2009 until 2010 two years then okay, I was two years. coming back here all right so here um so now occupy two rooms at a weekly rent. So weekly rental for two rooms. And they have a specific agreement here. Okay. The written agreement was titled license agreement. So it is labeled, okay, it is known as license agreement rather than tenancy agreement here. And it even contained a declaration that uh, this license agreement it did not create a tenancy. I mean, uh, this weekly arrangement whatsoever, it doesn't amount to tenancy. But later, um, this um 
the appellant came on for here. Uh, said no, no. Actually, I, 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 I deserve a fair rent under rent tax. But then, whether the arrangement here does it amount to tenancy? Whether possession here it creates tenancy or not here? So that was an issue, lah, basically, because the uh, respondent was uh, trying to evade the law, lah. Doesn't want to, uh, to give fair rent whatsoever. Okay, the issue under fair rent here. Okay, and the court held that. Uh, we are not concerned with the label. I mean, uh, so long the essence uh, of the arrangement uh, it refers to tenancy, that actually is a monster to ten tenancy. Okay? So the court said here, superficial labels are irrelevant. Doesn't matter if you have an agreement and you label as according to your wish, but then actually in essence, it is actually tenancy. Uh, then the court said, this is a tenancy that uh, you have to abide by the uh, rules and regulations under uh, rent tax here, for example. Okay? So the last, um, the, last, uh, the last sentence here, the only intention that was relevant was the intention to confer exclusive possession. So the moment um, respondent, okay, the, the one who owned the, 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 the room here, okay, grant exclusive possession, then actually it creates tenancy between them. Yeah, despite the uh, the labels that you affix to the to the agreement here, okay. I mean we have similar um, observation here in Malaysia. Okay, I mean the court uh, the court is not concerned with the label. Okay, the court will look at the substance of the arrangement here. Okay, whether it amounts to tenancy, it amounts to lease, for example, whether it amounts to higher purchase, for example. Okay, right. Let's move further. Okay, this is actually for your knowledge purpose because this one this is uh. This is practice at common law. Okay, this is only for usually for uh, application purpose. Uh, it's not really relevant, but it, but just to let you know. Okay, we have also uh, the doctrine or principle of law which is known as the right of immediate possession. I mean, especially whenever there's any uh, sale and purchase of a certain property, it will take certain time, kan? All right. So we want to know who has now the right of immediate possession and commencing from uh, which point of time here? Okay, the commencement of right because the moment you have the right, okay. Um, on uh, with you, okay, then you can sue for whatever uh, trespass lah committed by whatever person here, okay, or by uh, whoever here, all right. For example, you can uh, the last the last bullet there when a property is sold, okay, if a landlord files an immediate possession bond, okay, so usually the tenant, okay, the tenant who occupied the land, okay, has six days, okay, to respond. I mean, to really vacate uh, the area whatsoever lah. But that's that, that's usually the rule at common law. In Malaysia, you, you might have slightly different different way of doing things lah here. Okay, we want to know who who has the right now. Okay, after the property is sold, for example, because now the landlord want to um repossess or take back the, his right lah basically here. All right, so that's the thing doctrine of the right of immediate possession. Okay, we go to the second um element. Okay which deals with unjustifiable interference. I mean, in what way uh, trespass to land can be committed. So there are three important ways, lah, three important modes here. Okay, the first one, the most common one, by wrongful entry. I mean, the fact that the defendant enter onto the land, then this is uh, known as wrongful entry. Okay, personally, but what if the defendant asks somebody else, okay, his agent, his representative to enter uh, the plaintiff land, does it amount to trespass to land? Okay, we have four minutes left. Does it amount to trespass to land? Yes, it is. Okay, what if uh, the animal, cattle, or even cat, or whatever animal, dogs, okay, enter onto plaintiff land, enter into plaintiff uh, area? Is it a trespass to land? Yes, it is. But actually, it overlaps with nuisance as well. But we haven't learned, learned nuisance yet. Uh, but when you read reported cases, most of the time, trespass to land, it is a uh, file, a statement of claim, it will contain um, your first ground trespass to land, second ground nuisance. I mean, they go together because sometimes they overlap. So meaning that one simple act will might give rise to two um tortious action. Okay, it might cause uh, trespass to land. Okay, it might also give rise to nuisance. But we haven't covered nuisance yet. Chat box here. What do we see? Okay, the, the um we still have three minutes. Okay, uh, okay, another uh, way, okay, the second way, okay, the second uh, mode of committing or, or I mean what's the meaning of unjustifiable interference here? Yeah? In what way it is being committed here? Yeah? Remaining on land beyond the permission given. I mean, initially, uh, permission is given. Yeah, you can be on my land, but then you you have to be here. I mean, you have to leave by six o'clock or by 12 o'clock, like Cinderella, 12 midnight. Okay, if you are still on my land after 12 midnight, then you are considered as trespasser, uh, like that. I mean, remaining on land beyond the permission given. Okay, the third one, 
placing things on land. I mean, here um, the defendant just remain on his own land. Usually, it it is between uh, between uh, neighbors, can okay, neighbor, uh, Mr. A, Mr. B, Mr. B is staying next to Mr. A. So Mr. B stayed on his land, but then he just threw the unwanted stuff okay, on Mr. A's land, for example. Is it a, is it a trespass? Yes, it is. I mean, you don't have to step onto his land in order to commit trespass. You throw something, keep okay, place something which is against his. I mean. Against his consent or permission, then it's a monster trespass to land. Especially rubbish, can you don't want you don't want to uh, your place to be dirty. So whatever rubbish, whatever thing you don't want, you don't want. Then you just put uh, on neighboring's land, can uh, that one is a monster trespass, okay? So this is all the ways in order to commit or to uh, uh, in what way, okay? It might be considered as unjustifiable interference, interference which is not justified by the law or which is not allowed by. Uh, the plaintiff. That's why the plaintiff can proceed to take action based on trespass to land. Um, all right, we are going to discuss uh, some of the cases. Okay, actually, uh, we have around 12 minutes left, can? So, uh, we stop. Um, okay, let me stop share for a while. Okay, uh, the Zoom time will be ending in 1 minute 30 seconds. So, once it ends, then I want to stop record. Press the button. Mm.